Only one company in the United States builds jumbo jets. Soon it will soar past a milestone. Boeing began with a canvas and wood airplane nearly 100 years ago. That first biplane led to revolutionary aircraft like the 747 Jumbo Jet and today's 787 Dreamliner. Over a century, Boeing transformed travel across the globe. Boeing last year delivered more than 700 airplanes. Nearly 4 million people a day fly on a Boeing-made jet. Jan Crawford is at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington. Only on CBS This Morning, she takes us inside a flying revolution. Jan, good morning. Well, good morning, Charlie. You know, all you have to do is look around here at the Air and Space Museum, and there are Boeing planes all over the place. And the story of this company is, in many ways, the story of America and what American ingenuity can accomplish. In a world where flying is routine, but gravity is a law of nature, it's still mind-blowing. 500,000 pounds rising into the sky, miles above the Earth, soaring at 35,000 feet. And this factory outside Seattle is where it all comes together. Do you ever just walk in here and go, wow? Literally, no lie, every day. These are among the biggest airplanes in the world, built here by Boeing in one of the world's biggest buildings, overseen by Vice President Elizabeth Lund. If you took the Empire State Building and you laid it on its side, you could put 12 of them fully inside the building that we're in right what? now. What? The yeah. Empire State the Empire Building. Building, a dozen of them. You need that much space when, on any given day, you're building more than 20 jumbo jets at a time. From start to finish, it takes just five weeks to manufacture this airplane. Assembled with some automation, but at its core are people. 40,000 Boeing employees at this one site, rolling out a product that will take millions of people around the world. It is like the story of America, right? You think about the progress that the world, really led by American ingenuity, has made. And Boeing is just, I think they're a leader in that effort. Yeah, I mean, think back to where you started. Absolutely, you know? right? With a guy flying on a little plane with fabric wings. The guy was Bill Boeing, and it started 100 years ago with a pontoon seaplane. Before long, Boeing planes were everywhere, supporting America at war and ushering in a new age of travel, even helping get us to the moon. Today, it's the biggest aerospace company in the world. We knew we had a big job to do, and so we did it. In the world of aviation, everyone knows the name Joe Sutter. Fifty years ago, he led a revolution in air travel, designing the iconic 747. Skeptics said a jet that big would never work. But Sutter was proven right from the 747's first flight. The landing was perfect. When I went out to the runway of where I had, had Nancy, she was crying. Your wife was crying because she was so relieved? Relieved, yeah. And uh, happy for the fact that I, what I told her was the truth. Sutter has been with Boeing for nearly 70 years and says the work is personal. If I hear on the news that an airplane got into trouble, I still say to myself, I wonder if it's a Boeing airplane and I wonder if there's something I did wrong. It's something you never leave behind you. Talking with people at Boeing, you hear that over and over, from the guys on the line to CEO Dennis Mullenberg. We work on things that really matter and uh, people's lives literally depend on what we do. There have been stumbles. Mullenberg says perhaps the biggest was the highly anticipated Dreamliner. Boeing developed entirely new technology to make it more comfortable and fuel efficient. But manufacturing delays put the airplane behind schedule. And then a problem with overheating batteries. A fire started on one flight. Another had to make an emergency landing. No one was hurt, but the plane was grounded. When we are unable to deliver on our commitment at some point, it's, it's devastating. It's discouraging. That's just not who we are. Boeing redesigned the battery, and now the Dreamliner is back in the sky. From the setback, Boeing learned the perils of changing too much too fast. That's why they're taking existing technology and tweaking it for new products, like folding wingtips on Boeing-made fighter jets, 
That innovation will go on Boeing's next big passenger plane so it can fit at more airport gates. We have got to be on the forefront and the leading edge of innovation or we're going to get passed by. We see more competitors around the world. Its only real competitor now is the European consortium Airbus. The companies are locked in a fierce head-to-head -head battle in a worldwide market. Today, Boeing sells more than 70 percent of its airplanes outside the U.S. And when it looks to the next 100 years, it sees even more growth overseas, especially in China. Our projection is that the world over the next 20 years needs 38,000 new commercial airplanes. And more than 6,000 of those will be in China. Yes, many people don't realize it, but we're the U.S.'s biggest exporter in the manufacturing sector. So aerospace, airplanes, that's a global business. Now, as a further example of that relationship between Boeing and the Chinese, when the Chinese president visited here in the U.S. last month, he went out to that factory in Seattle, and Boeing announced it was building a plant in China. Now, Donald Trump says that's going to cost U.S. jobs, but Boeing says it's solidifying its relationship with the Chinese, and that will mean more orders for airplanes and more jobs in the U.S. Nora? Jan, that was so oh interesting. Boy, it yeah. it's, it's such an American story. It is. Both in terms of how the globe is changing, in terms of where the markets are, but American technology and innovation. It's a reminder, we take it all for granted. It yeah. really is amazing every well, time you think about it. And how America can make stuff better than other people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Great story. Congrats to Boeing on 100 years.